So first of all, I would uh, say that I'm very pleased to present this exhibition because I've been always a great admirer of Babette's work, so it's really a privilege to work with your heroes in a way. So I had uh, work with uh, Charlemagne Palestine and uh, Nathalie de Pasquier, Babette. It, it, it's, and for me, it's a um, it's an ongoing investigation also of certain figures that for me are very influential um, and they're all figures very hard to define in a singular way and, uh, and each of them, as in the case of Babette, I mean, uh, they depart from the work on one field but then the work is very sort of, is an expanded practice of something, like uh, with Charlemagne was the music, with Natalie was the design, and I think about this film, filmmaking, I think you about define yourself as a filmmaker who also uh, takes photographs, but uh, as you will see in the exhibition, uh, the, your practice and your preoccupation on uh, issues like the idea of the act of looking on how we look at images and also the uh, idea of rethinking history and uh, working a, a around uh, time, uh, movement, space, light. It's really like, um, I think it's very unique, it's very complex and, uh, and I think with uh, this exhibition, we we try to um, also to approach the language of the exhibition, trying also to play with that format. And um, at the here at the entrance already, you have a sort of uh, introduction uh, to um, to Babette is a sort of atlas, a personal atlas, uh, following a chronological order, and um, I think it's uh, it's interesting because it's pretty well uh, um, kind of uh, it was made following uh, a, an intuitive sort of approach, but within a set of rules. So to give you a kind of uh, uh, idea of how I made my choice, some of it is random, but some of it is not random, because I thought about it as soon as I saw this slide in July, and I decided the first shelf would be whatever things refer to my life before going to the US. And the two second shelf are actually the 70s, because it's a crucial decade for me, where I first became really somebody with the ambition to create things, to make film in particular. And I made my first film, and I started in 73, finished in early 75. Meanwhile, I was, my reputation was growing as a street photographer of theater, dance, and so on. And I also was mostly known in film circles, which were not uh, performance circles, they were two circles. I had, many crowds to associate with, if you want. And that's the reason I was very difficult to classify, because the experimental community did not really like me, because I was doing narrative film, and they were against narrative. Okay? And I was also very technically, uh, technically uh, proficient, if you want. And most experimental work is done by people who are not really technically proficient, which I thought was making me, outside of the fact that I was a woman, not really fitting only in the experimental field scene. So I had to find another family, if you want. Uh, another home. And the home was really theater, performance, the performing art, later on dance, and also performance art. Uh, performance is a term in English which is used for the way you act, but also the work you do as a creative artist engineering other people's action on stage. Also the work, uh, the example you know most recently and somebody I work with, uh, Marina Abramovic, for instance, but in the 70s, the performance was also the name given to the people you were recording 
to work on your own work as a performance, which could be a theater, could be often made with uh, amateurish actor, if you want, or non-professional actors. So that idea of non-professionalization in, uh, uh, how do you call it, uh, improvisation was very, very much the key to my interest in New York City. How can you do work which is actually not Caucasian, if you want, coming from France, obviously, mathematician and by training, you know, I was very worried about having a very systematic, descriptive methodology, so I wanted to train myself, uh, following the advice of John Cage, you know, of shedding my old self and inventing a new self, and besides I was going with the fact that we were feminist and as women who wanted to invent a new subjectivity. So all of that is more or less trace, you know, in the first, the second and third shelf. The fourth shelf is the beginning of the 80s, where, it's the one which has the black, yeah, which is the beginning of the 80s, when I made a very important film, I grew again very interested, you know, seldom, seldom, but uh, uh, dance photograph, the one you see is that I passed by Trisha Brown. And, uh, but I have a period where I'm very sick, so I decide not to say anything about that. The next decade is the 90, where I, I come back to, to, to life, if you want, uh, thinking of my friend Georges Perrac, who is a great writer, which I knew when I was uh, 19. And so now the, the, the first shelf as a photo of Georges Perrac. Yeah, which is very well known, actually. You could have seen it if you're Perrac again. Uh, and uh, so, and I read important books, so most of the books you see are books which are following my intellectual trajectory. And starting after the decade of the 80s, when we towards the new landscape, I start to be contacted to make postcards of pictures I had taken 20 years before, like the one of Georges Perret postcard, which has a quotation in French, which is wonderful, really, <laughs> written by Georges, obviously. Uh, the next decade is the 90, is the 2000, after 90, and Century City is a show I'm, I'm a part of, for the part of New York, and that was amazing shot for me, because suddenly I see my work next to another photograph uh, of New York, and pretty much nobody else representing New York in terms of photography, and I say, gee, there is something there, so I have to take care of my photo, uh, archive, which was seen, there was no doing dance photograph since 85, and I say, okay, I have to rethink what I did in the past and generate work from it. Uh, but I was very much against, for instance, the attitude of somebody like Shri Levine, you know, just copying. I mean, all the appropriation of the 80s, I hated, so I say, I'm not going to do that. So, <laughs> you know, I, I, and also I did a thing which was really a labor of love. Uh, Le Model de Pickpocket. Uh, it means the model of Pickpocket. Pickpocket is a famous film by Robert Bresson. And I got, I got very involved in doing the film, and it was actually more difficult than I thought because I could not raise money to do a dumb film. It was the change of technology going from film production to documentary to video projection of documentary. And I did not have uh, subject matter. Everybody thinks Bresson is a perfect subject matter, but it's not commercial. They don't want to touch it, no money for it. You know? The only thing I got from the French is 1,000 euro to develop the script, that's it. And the film cost 50,000 euro, you know, which I had to earn to make it. But I'm very happy to have the film, so it's there, and there is some things which have self reflection And you see, I don't know if you know, uh, Georges Racampagne is Italian, but he's translated in French because he teaches at, uh, at the École des Hauts Études in France. So his book are published in Italian, a year later published in France, and he has to wait 10 years to be published in English. So I read him primarily in French, and most of my books are primarily read in French because the French translate enormously uh, wider from other language to America, I never do that. So I buy them in general later if they become, uh, like for instance, the, 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 the book on the uh, language of the third right, I read in French first, but I also buy it in English and I want to do a project with that. It's 
sound on yet, but you know, the perversion of language is one of my preoccupations. So the book is there in the 90s because it's a seed for a future work which will be here, hopefully, hopefully. It will be done. <laughs> so uh, it goes on to uh, 2010, where I do a very important installation. Uh, 2007 and 8, I do the film with Marina Abramovic. I do uh, an important for me installation at Berlin Biennale. So a lot of the image here are reflection of installation rather than film. And here is a little bit what happened in the last two years, you know. Uh, uh, some photographs which are supposed to be sold and also because the museum has lost its funding. Uh, you know, uh, uh, I, I'm, I'm more and more interested in painting, so I develop a new show here for Vienna, uh, which you can see in the last room. Uh, obviously now we know then it's not either uh, the left or the right. We have the left, we obviously is in the right, all right, actually, probably. The left is the right. <laughs> yeah, the left is the right, like the glass golden piece, which I admire a lot. And, uh, and increasingly, I go and see shows, so the idea of show, the memory show I take was Beyond Belief. I think it's three or four years ago, so you know, things which were really marking for me. And, uh, and the fact that her life as artist doing media work is really complicated by, uh, uh, you know, the changing technology. So I wanted to have a kind of a humorous version of what it is to constantly upgrade. You know, today I'm late because I have to upgrade my iPad. You know, and it takes 20 minutes and it took only 5 minutes and obviously it's going to screw up all kind of my passwords, I'm not going to get my email and I'm already frustrated thinking about it. <laughs> so I'm sure those frustrations you do have to. And um, I wanted just to... Um, to uh, either, yeah. Sorry, you wanted to... No, no. Okay. No, something about that, how the show has been conceived before now we go to see it. But I think it was nice as a kind of overview going through this shelf as a tool to discover a bit your way of work and get your imagery. So the exhibition embraces um, and exhibits uh, both all the, um, uh, all the photos um, to document uh, the dance, the theater, the performance scene in New York in the 70s, as well uh, uh, 13 films uh, by Gobet and uh, uh, three installations. And, um, but the core of the exhibition, I think, is really also the way uh, we decided to present the films because uh, um, we, we decided to avoid to have uh, multiple projections and uh, so to create, uh, let's say, an unordinary sort of experience for a spectator of a, of a contemporary art exhibition where basically you enter and you are free to stroll through the space and to look at the works. Uh, instead we work on the, let's say, on the opening hours of the Kunsthalle and uh, we use it as a kind of score. So we use time as a medium and, and space to create um, uh, a score made of films, of 13 different films and sounds. So you, you will enter now and they will uh, start with a sound uh, and then there will be a film, so always a sequence you always will have one element after each other. And uh, so will be, you will uh, see like four screens in the space and there is, so there will be a real kind of choreography. So you, in a way, is the, are the works to dictate the rhythm to the spectator. I think the exhibition also is an exhibition that requires uh, uh, attention, time, also from from the spectator, I think is interesting, and is also a kind of statement on the contemporary kind of situation, also of exhibitions in uh, that you can see I, like around. The exhibition is almost finished. There is one installation which is not quite complete, and when you are there, I can tell you what is missing. But altogether, considering I worked on it three days. I mean, I worked on it for three months, basically. But 
to install after the beginning of the installation when most of the uh, frame pieces were put in, I see it's such an interesting space because it's a space in which there is huge area where there is nothing. And you have blank screen, but when there's when the blank when all the there's full screen if you want, when the full screen are blank, you do have sound which is coming from the circumference of the place. And you have which we call space and when one screen lit, only one is lit, and you can decide to stay and see the film, and the film sometimes is sound, huh? sometimes has sound, so you hear the sound next to the screen. But if you are if you are if you are not interested in seeing a film which is ten minutes about moving back of the US, and at the end you finish with a very erotic scene, I think <laughs> you can go you can go somewhere else. You have uh, uh, two major installations with uh, artwork, and you have uh, associated with those two installations you have a film, and which is made with steel photographs. So, and you have another area which is color, because my early work was only in black and white, but all my film were color in black and white from the beginning. So I wanted to have something which is just about color and it's the last scene. And the last area, which has also a Slavic uh, show, which is uh, 21 minutes long. So you have plenty of things to see, which are purely visual. And, uh, and uh, at the same time, now that it's finished, more or less, I feel the show signifies a reflection on the presentation of street photograph, but also on the viewer, the ability to negotiate, to see uh, to go uh, to to uh, to make his uh, attention span more refined at the end of the visit, and I'm going to explain to you how that happened. It's very simple. You enter, you see either no film or a film, but you you perceive there is light somewhere else. So you go to the place there is light. In general, you gravitate to light, and there you are in a different rhythm and in different time. When you come back. There is a film on the screen, or just sound, but the film starts very slow, soon after the, the sound. So you can stick with the film, and there is two films which are 90 minutes long, if you, and they will be sitting. So if you sit there and look at 90 minutes, definitely, you, you have spent the time just doing one thing, which particularly you never do in a museum or in a gallery, except somebody like me, because I love to go to a museum and spend an hour in front of the painting, but you know, I'm, I'm me. And I'm sure some of you are like that, but let's say the film is exercising your sense of endurance with the I don't speak no, no, loud no, enough. No, no. Okay. So I, I think that's a game, you know, and actually I started with game in my first decade in Paris. Uh, and when I was a kid, I was playing game, I invented game, you know. And I think game for me is the way I would like you to represent installation. <laughs> You play the board you want. You spend the time you want in the different corner, but the only different and differences is what you should retain from it. That's the yeah, simplest that's way to explain. Yeah, I think it's very hard to explain. Then it's funny that all your work is about <laughs> how to look. And now it's we are just. I, I mean, you are just investing. So I think it would be better if you can really stuff. like. Uh, to retain or not to retain. To experience the exhibition, maybe then we can, like, if you have questions or we can talk after yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, so after eight hours and uh, seven hours, oh, the side of the because no. this is the length of the exhibition, so the, the no, score. It's not eight hours. The something side like, is six something six less. Hours. Six hours, 43 minutes a day. Yes, exactly. So you can see the exhibition. But you don't have to stay six hours. You come back at another time of day and you will have another experience. That's it. So why do you see it now? It be different if you come back uh, in the afternoon, for example. 